I'm OptiGPU, and this gaming PC needs a better processor. It's been running with an i5-3470 and an A2000 GPU, and has been doing great with some games, but there's a noticeable CPU bottleneck in others. So here's what it looks like on the inside. Back here is the A2000. I would recommend the A2000 for anyone wanting to convert a small form factor OptiPlex into a gaming PC. This is an i7-3770S, and it's the best CPU that the 7010 motherboard will support. The CPU is tucked under here, and so in order to get to it, we need to move the optical drive and the hard drive bays out of the way. The optical drive was converted to an SSD to run the operating system and make things more snappy. To remove, just unplug the power and SATA cables and lift up on this tab in the back while sliding it back. To remove the hard drive bay, slide the lock to the unlock position, remove the SATA and power cables again on it, and it will slide up out of the way just like so. So we're removing the SATA and power cables now, and after that it will swing straight up and you can set it aside. I'll set mine right here. Now that we've exposed the heat sink, we're going to remove these four screws to remove it. Uh, as you can see, I have four 4 gig sticks of RAM in there. The screwdriver that works for this is a 3.5 Phillips head screwdriver. So we're going to use my handy dandy toolkit here and remove these four screws so we can get that heat sink off. Now we can lift this heat sink up and out of the way. Make sure when you're lifting it up that you unplug its power cable so that you don't drop it like I just do right here. Uh, that might be bad for your motherboard. So unhook the power cable, then you can swing it up and get it out of the way. Now, as you can see, there is some thermal paste on the CPU. It's fairly fresh and hasn't really dried out, but it's always a good idea to wipe it off and replace. So I'm going to wipe the thermal paste off of this heat sink with this specialized wipe that I have. There we go. Now it is clean. You could use a specialized wipe or you could just use a paper towel, uh, whatever you have handy. Now to remove the CPU, you just slide this bar to the side and you can then swing up the cover and make sure when you're removing the CPU that you lift it directly up. You don't want to bend the contacts under the CPU or else you're going to have a hard time getting it to work after you replace it. So I'm going to lift it directly up, trying not to damage anything. And there you are. We're going to set that aside and then bring out our new CPU and set it directly down in its place. So again, when you're putting it down, make sure that you are lining it up the same way the old one was lined up and press it straight down. And then you can put the retention cage back on. Fun fact, this is also called a load plate. Once the load plate is in place, it's time to add thermal paste. Here's the thermal paste I use. There will be a link in the description for this and anything else I use so you can follow along yourself. I'm just going to put a pea-sized amount right here in the center. You don't want to put too much or else you get some angry comments. Um, also, it could spill over the sides and not work effectively and those kind of things. But more importantly, you get angry comments. And now we put the heat sink back on. So you definitely want to plug it into power or else you're really going to be wondering why your temperatures are so high and why your rig is so whisper quiet. This particular heat sink is the higher performance version that Dell makes. It has copper bars 
that bisect the aluminum on the base plate to draw more heat away to the fins, and then a fan that shoots that hot air out the back of the computer. It's higher performance, but it also can be a little bit louder, and you'll definitely tell as soon as you turn your PC on and that fan kicks in, it's a little bit louder than your normal heat sink fan. Whenever I screw anything down into a motherboard, whether it's a heat sink or anything else, I always screw it down in a crossways pattern, little by little, and then moving on to the next screw. That way I'm not putting a lot of tension on the motherboard and potentially causing damage. Now we just need to put the hard drive enclosure back into place. So it attaches right here and swings down. We're going to plug in the power and SATA cables and then swing it the rest of the way down. Once it's swung down into place, you want to lock the mechanism over to the left. That keeps it from moving around and potentially getting damaged while in use. Now we're putting the optical drive back into place and plugging in power and SATA cables for that as well. All right, now that it's all plugged in, we're going to get the top back on this thing and fire it up and see how much better it performs with the new CPU. Here's the original 3D Mark test with the i5-3470. As you can see, the CPU score was 2771 and an overall score of 4942. Now with the new CPU, the CPU score is almost a thousand points better and it got a little bit better of an overall score as well. I would say that's a significant improvement over the old CPU. All right, this is Forza Horizon 5 Ultra settings and we finally got a game that's using over five gigs of VRAM, 5.3 dedicated, 5.6 allocated, and about 10 gigs of RAM overall. This thing is running like a dream on this rig. All right, this is Ultra Settings with the new i7-3770 installed. Um, the differences that I can see is it's running at lower wattage um, in the upper 20s instead of the low 30s. And the CPU usage percentage is hanging out between 50 and 60% versus 70, 75, 80% with the old CPU. So the old CPU was struggling at times, and this new one is having really no problems at all, unlike our driver. All right, there you have it. If you want to fully maximize your 7010 small form factor, you're going to want to get an i7-3770. You can pick one up for about 40 bucks on eBay or Amazon, and it really takes your gaming experience to the ultimate levels. It's not struggling very much at all to run Forza Horizon 5, and that paired with, I would say, a... Um, a2012 gigabyte would be the absolute maximum that you could take your 7010.